Hello and welcome to PA Harness Week. I'm Charla McBride. Well, the weather is getting warmer and the races are heating up the tracks. We've got major milestones. We've got history in the making. And we've got a memorial race for one of the sport's finest. That and much more is coming your way on racing's fastest-paced half hour. The final of the Earl Beale is tonight at Pocono. We'll tell you why you won't want to miss the big final. That plus George Napolitano reaches a major milestone. I'll have that story later. And we'll head to Canada and Mohawk for the $1.5 million North American Cup, featuring the one and only Sweet Lou. The hottest horsecasters on the tube are coming your way right now on Comcast Sportsnet. Oh, they go. Explosive matter hits the Colonial easily. Underway. Starts fast off by Aaron Brent Messenger into the early. Fifteen five and four the half time. Just over three to go. At the top of the track. Well, hello there, and welcome to PA Harness Week, along with the lovely, always lovely Heather Moffat. I'm Steve Ross. So nice of you to join us today. And boy, did you pick a good day to join us, because good stuff is going on. But before I get to that, i got to tell you, you you know, it is better to look good than to feel good. And this woman looks marvelous today. You look so summery. And when I say summary, I'm not talking about you look like you may have been guilty of committing a summary offense. I'm talking, rather, the time of the year. Yeah, summer's officially here. Which is hot, right? It is. Very warm. And speaking so. of heat, what could possibly be hotter than the $500,000 Earl Beale Memorial, which takes place tonight in the nice, cool, and crisp Pocono Mountains. You can go out there and see one of the premier trotting races in the world. Would you agree? Yes, $500,000, three-year-old trotting colts, and we're going to show you the eliminations first, right? Let's do that, babe. Okay. All right. Okay. I've got the first one, and now number six is Goo Goo Gaga. This horse so goes in. You're reverting back to childhood. <laughs> what? What's so, the name of the horse? Forget that Goo Goo Gaga crap. Come on, give me. Goo Goo Gaga, right? Okay, I love that name. How do you not love the horse's name? Goo Goo okay. Gaga. Goes into the race, ten career starts, but nine wins. He's a three to five favorite, and then the three is a magic tonight. He's two to one with Hall of Famer Ron Pierce. The better's not too confident about the rest of the field. On the outside, here comes Goo Goo Gaga, the three to five favorite, has won nine of ten lifetime starts, took a little bit of air, but takes the lead now for Corey Callahan. Frostbites K back to second, followed by Highland Yankee third. Slight gap to Modern Family, then comes Magic tonight. Back to back Pennsylvania Sire stakes for that one. Solvato joins the outer flow now, third over. Little Brown Fox stays in at the back. To the half mile marker they go, get there in 56 even, 29 even second pan. That's a bit of a breather for this caliber of trotter. So Goo Goo Gaga should have plenty left to give here on the back stretch, leading it by a link, doing it willingly now for Callahan. That's Frostbite's K with the trip. Modern Family first over is gliding towards the front, two back. Inside fourth, Highland Yankee. Magic tonight following the cover, still about five away. But Goo Goo Gaga now separating on top, three quarters, 123 and three, 27 and three on the back. Goo Goo Gaga. Uh, has a three-length lead. Hasn't been asked yet. Frostbites K trying to get there. Highland Yankee uh, fading now. Magic tonight. Top of the stretch. It's all Goo Goo Gaga. He's under wraps doing it all on his own. It's just a matter of what time he sets here. Way back to Frostbites K and Highland Yankee. Goo Goo Gaga superstar here. Goo Goo Gaga made the lead around the, <laughs> around the first turn with the I am the world's greatest Ali move, right? And he knocks the field out by, oh my goodness, seven lengths, 151 and three. By the way, a world record for a three year old trotter on a five eighth mile track. And the sad thing is, he's not eligible for the handball. No, he's not. He's not. But hello, that's like so in two months from now, okay? Well, where are you at the field tonight? He's in the field, okay? That's what's important here. Little Brown Fox was second, a frost bites. Uh, was third, and the Magic tonight was fourth, and those four get in the final. Okay, two races later was the second Earl Beale Elim for three-year-old open trotters, and the Jimmy Tactor entry of number one, Uncle Peter, with Ron Pierce. And by the way, we should mention that Ron Pierce is now the second leading all-time money-winning driver behind JC, and although you may think JC stands for something else, it actually stands for, in this game, anyway, John Campbell. 
and nothing but class with Sir Tector himself went off the prohibitive one to five chalk. Number three, Lightning Storm with Dave Miller was five to one. And number two, Storm and Norman with the man who was soon to breathe very rarefied air, Dave Pallone, who went off at seven to one. And with a call, Jim Bavilia. Nothing but class really burning it up early as they come around to the quarter, 27 even. The leader right now, nothing but class with Jimmy Tactor in the bike. Pocket trip early for money on my mind. From third, here comes Storm and Norman. The 2011 Pennsylvania champ is first over and flying on by here for Dave Pallone. Meanwhile, Lightning Storm moves up fourth, followed by my MVP, Uncle Peter, Breeders' Crown champ last year and coming off a win in Sire Stakes action is sixth right now with Pierce. And at the back, Dandover. Half mile 55 and 1, 28 and 1 second panel fractions faster than the record setting mile in race 10. Up top it's Storm and Norman with Dave Pallone laying them down here from third. Big move coming now from Andy Miller and money on my mind. Meanwhile nothing but class still there. Flying up on the outside lightning storm and Uncle Peter now getting a move on fifth to his inside there. My MVP Dan over at the back to three quarters now in 123 and 2. 28 and 1 third panel and right now Storm and Norman repel the charge of money on my mind. Nothing but class on the inside. Uncle Peter gearing up three wide, going right around Lightning Storm. At the top of the stretch here, it's Storm and Norman with a nice edge, about three lengths. Way on the outside, Uncle Peter is carving it up here. Storm and Norman looking for the nine. Uncle Peter trying to get up. It's Storm and Norman. Storm and Norman grabbed the lead from nothing but class and lived long enough to beat the fast closing Uncle Peter by a head in 151 and 4. Now, yes, you heard me right. 151 and 4, a three year old trotter in the Pocono Mountains on a cool night. Yeah. How fast is this breed going to go? Yeah, I don't know, but he's still got to, you know, beat Goo Goo Gaga. So they're, they're both really good horses. Absolutely. And also, how about this one? Dave Pallone, as we mentioned before, is about to breathe that rarefied air that only to this point did Hervé Fillon breathe. He's about 30 and change away from doing that. He's, if he stays healthy, obviously, he's going to do it. And we're looking forward to that, too. Now, speaking of Goo Goo Gaga, I'm doing it myself now. We caught up with driver Corey Callahan to find out about what he thinks his chances are as the favorite in tonight's final. Corey Goo Goo Gaga, extremely impressive in his elimination, but Storm and Norman wasn't a slouch himself. What are your feelings going into the final? Um, yeah, I mean, Storm and Norman's a good cold. He was the uh, PA Sire Stakes two-year-old of the year last year. I mean, he won a good mile. Um, I don't really think he was as, as impressive as my horse, but I don't want to take anything away from the rest of them. I mean, you know, they're very good horses. Uncle Peter was making up a lot of ground there through the stretch. Um, you know, but I mean, our Goo Goo Gaga was just on idle, and I, I hope we can continue that and, and uh, you know, do that again on Saturday. Now, he has this nickname, Goo Goo Gaga. They call him the freak. Can you explain that? He is a freak, you know. Um, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just a, a force of nature. I mean, that's the only way to, to really describe it. I mean, he's a very, you know, kind of an, an ill-bred horse. Um, you know, I mean, if you look back, though, his sixth dam was this mare, Rosalind, um, you know, who they wrote a book about, Born to Trot. You know, so there's a lot of history, you know, back there, but he's by a pacing bred horse, and you know, if you were to see him in a sale book, you would skip right over him. You know, I mean, he would have brought nothing where some of these colts that he's racing against brought big time money. And they're, you know, if you look through a sale book, there's nothing but champions. Well, best of luck to you and to the owner trainer, Richard Hands, in the Beale Memorial. Thanks for being on the show, Corey. No problem. Thank you. Thanks so much, Corey Callahan, the man I affectionately refer to as CC Driver. What a man. What a guy. We like him a lot. Okay. And best of luck tonight in the Earl Beale final, which if you have any sense in your head, which I'm assuming everybody watches this show does, you will make tracks to the Poconos tonight. Or if you can't get out there, it's right here in Harris, Harris Philadelphia, correct? That's correct. All right. Yeah, come out now, simulcasting. The first race on Sunday was a claimer 20 down to 15, usually no big whoop, but this particular race was special. And you know why it was special? I went right back into my Howard Cosell. Here's Heather to give you all the exciting details. Okay. Heather? The, 
Oh, I wish I could do some kind of impersonation. Do it. Uh, yeah, I can. <laughs> like, totally. Thank you, Steve. I don't even know who that is, but there you go. All right. Now, on this day, you have to remember that between Harris, Philadelphia, and Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, George Napolitano entered this day with 23 drives. He wasted no time, got the job done in the first race with his 5,000th win. It was on Father's Day, yes, at Philadelphia. He gets to the front by the half-mile marker with a Dragon Oz. Now, they win in 153 and 1, and it gave, again, his Joe DiPolitano's 5,000th career victory. And later on in the show, our Char Loverly catches up with Georgie Knapp to find out what it feels like to have 5,000 wins in the bank. Don't go anywhere when we come back. More from Harris, Philadelphia. Great action. Stay tuned. Valentino's taking it to one more lap, and they hit the half in 56 seconds flat. Mohegan Sun, off-track wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Why do so many winners travel in EB trailers? They love the ride. EB Paysetter trailers deliver your horses in peak condition, ready to race every time. Designed to provide safe and comfortable transport for standard bred racehorses, EB's Paysetter Series trailers are the preferred choice of professional standard bred trainers and breeders nationwide. All EB Paysetter models feature custom standard bred options and excellent airflow and aligned interior ceiling to keep your horses fresh and comfortable. Every EB trailer has commercial quality componentry and riveted sidewall construction engineered and designed to stand up to constant and rigorous horse and road use. And a sleek aerodynamic nose design that also delivers improved fuel savings. More winners ride with EB than any other trailer. EB, setting the pace in standard red horse transportation. there and welcome back to PA Harness Week. You know her. She's Heather Moffitt. I'm Steve Ross. You know who you are. Let's get back to the action. Friday's 11th race here at Harris Philly was an $80,000 Pennsylvania Cyrus Day for three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. Number four, all-star legend. Well, that's a tough name to live up to, wouldn't you agree? With Tim Dietrich left all the way to the back, wiring winning by nine, you heard right, nine, in 148-2. and two. Number three, Mudslide, Slim, and the Blue Horizon, an old James Taylor album. An eight-to-one shot with John Campbell, second, number seven, Attaboy Dan, off at 11-to-one of with Brett Miller, got third. There were three others on the card, and Heather has the next one. Yeah, Timmy Tietrich, out of the four past races that we had, Tim Tietrich wins three of them. The other two winners he had that day, Easy Noah, he wins in 153, and then Bacon on the Beach, Timmy wins again, 149 and four. Okay, how about in the eighth, another Pennsylvania Sire stick with 80 grand on the line. I like dreaming, because dreaming can make you mine. I like hoping. I can go on if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Nolan. You know that? Yeah, yeah. He wrote um, My Eyes Adore You, right? And uh, Lady Marmalade. Yeah. Uh, 1975, right? I like dreaming. Everybody knows that. How do you oh, wow. know that? <laughs> Whatever. Well, you surprise yeah. me constantly, Well, I'll tell you. Okay, surprise me. Do the 10th a condition pace here at Harris Philly. I, I will. Okay, <laughs> purse is $20,000. 
Number six is a mainland key. He's the favorite with the White Knight of Brian Sears. The two is Here We Go Again. Speaking of songs, I always think of the White Snake song, Here I Go Again. So I just, every time I see this horse's name, I think Here of I go again. Tawny Contain on the car, like doing your splits and stuff. <laughs> okay, and then number one is Valentino. He's been racing against some of the best older pacers in North America. This is a significant drop in class for him. Valentino sticks ahead in front from one more lap, who continues to hold his ground at the pegs. Two lengths back, Mainland Key is third, Sonic Dancer gap cover, dropping back three and a half from the front. Here we go again, needs somewhere to go with some pace. Feel like a full gear's up three wide with five and a half to make up. One and a half to Andy Rue, a joint last with I want to go fast. Valentino at the eighth pole, a length and a half in front from one more lap. Late on the scene, Mainland Key and the Red Blinkers is making a late bid. Three quarters in 23, flat 16th to go. Valentino hard driven. Mainland E chasing after him. Down to the line, Valentino, yes! One more laugh leaves really sharply out of post state. They get to the quarter mile marker, 26 and three. Then he gets a breather, but Valentino, he's already out, moving. Gets to the front by the three quarter pole, 123 flat, and he hangs on to win in 115.4 with Jim Pantliano in the bike. Uh, Mainland Key, he got a really good trip. He was second. Here we go again was third. Sunday's 12th here at Harris Philly. It was the feature. Winners over 25000 bucks. $30,000 was the purse. Number one, dial or no dial with CC Driver was Eva Money Chalk. Number four, I am Bonacera. And you thought you were, right? Was two to one with Andy Miller, and the others were all long. And here's the call. Dial or no dial, pushed on by drum fire at the 316s. Three quarters in 123 and two. Dial or no dial, still a length in front. Drum fire offers steady but mild pressure coming to the eighth pole. And bet the town is just one pace as they turn for home. Dial or no dial, past the 150. A length and three quarters in front, and he will hold from bet the town. Dial or no dial. Dial or no dial wired this bunch in 150 and four. Number five, bet the town. An 11 to one shot with Dan Dubay took the two hole and grabbed second. Number two, drum fire off a 20 to one with the white knight, Brian Sears. Came up first up rather and settled for third. Don't you dare go away. Let me tell you what we got coming up, okay? More racing from Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. Charlotte will be here to chat with Georgie Knapp about 5,000 and the rest of his great career. And our lovely Kelly makes her selections for the week and is going to put some money in your bankroll. Don't go away. Dragon Oz is home. George Napolitano, 5,000 wins. Welcome, good old Sunday. No love when you don't come. Welcome, son. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to your place in the sun. And welcome back. This is PA Harness Week, along with the lovely Heather Moffat, who is all summer today. I'm Steve Ross in my quasi-gangster costume today, and it's the black striped shirt. It's the anti-summer look. I don't know. Yeah. So we're kind of like cancel each other out. Okay, back to the action. Sunday at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. I know what you're saying to yourself. Steve, Pocono's no race on Sunday, but they did this Sunday, okay? And this is a condition pace, and with that one, here's Heather. All right, yes, we have some really top Pacers here. Winners over. Pacers number six, Mears Hanover. He's the favorite. He's got Matt Cacali in the bike. If you remember last week's show, remember? Matt, or Matt Cacali. I'm stuck on calling him Matt Cacali. I like it better myself, yeah. Okay, don't tell him. Okay, we just won't tell him that <laughs> word. Yeah, sick. okay. Um, so that was Charlotte's teacher on last week's show. Remember, he taught her yes. how to drive. So, okay. And she, her horse won. Yeah. Is exciting. He's a good teacher. The three, Rocking Glass, looks for his fourth win in a row. And number eight, AJ Corbelli, won this class a couple starts back, but he's got a really tough post here. Underway in the feature, and it's a quick start for who goes first. He bolts out of there to lead by three parts of a length. 
Coming up on the outside now, Cinderella guy in two second, while Rockin' Glass is back at the pylons third, about two and a half off the lead. To his outside there is uh, Mears Hanover, and a slight gap to Hurricane Scotty J and drop red six at the end, McClellan and A.J. Corbelli. They come around that first turn of the quarter. It's a quick one, 26 and two. The lead was briefly held by Cinderella guy, but now it's Mears Hanover, the four to five favorite with Matt Kakali on top. Here comes Rockin' Glass. He's one three in a row he wants four he's stepping up the ladder tonight meanwhile cinderella guy has also been hot and is also stepping up in class inside fourth there who goes first is rocking glass trying to clear inside fifth is hurricane scotty j then drop red mcclellan and aj corbelli rocking glass got clear the half 54 and two predictably quick fractions up here it's rocking glass with the lead mirrors hanover lurking in behind him there then comes cinderella guy and now first over Drop red comes into the picture with Joe Pavia Jr. Two and a half back and closing on the outside. McClellan, who can also fly late, is fifth. AJ Corbelli is third over at the back. Who goes first in Hurricane Scotty J? Rock and Glass with the edge at three quarters, 122 and two. 28 even third panel. Rock and Glass still with something left is about a length and a quarter in front of Drop Red. Mears hand over about two back and now McClellan launches out three wide. AJ Corbelli also coming up. Top of the stretch. It's still rocking glass with the lead. Here comes Mears Hanover now in the passing lane. McClellan on the outside is closing. Mears Hanover and rocking glass battling rocking glass. The moves of the class definitely didn't bother rocking glass. He beats the best pacers on the ground here. Um, now he gets his move going. The front stretch he clears the favorite Mears Hanover. And uh, even though Mears Hanover does challenge him back a little bit, uh, George Natchez keeps rocking glass going. And they score by a neck in 150 flat. I know. George Knapp, he caught up with our Charlotte McBride, and she talked to the Napster about his great career and about his huge milestone that we saw earlier in the show 5,000 career victories. Dragon Oz is home, George Napolitano, 5,000 wins. Driver George Napolitano is in his 20th year of harness racing, and at 45 years young, Napolitano recently reached a major milestone of 5,000 career wins. It's definitely special, but um, it don't really change my life. I don't really look at numbers like that and get sick over it, stuff like that. It's just a little award. I put it in a closet, and hopefully one day when I retire, I'll put it up in a room somewhere and look at it. Georgie Knapp entered last Sunday's day of racing one win shy of 5,000. So it was likely that with 23 races on tap, he would reach that mark. Were you hoping to do it early on like you did? Yeah, because uh, the wife and kid uh, was here. So, uh, yeah, I was hoping that we could get it done. Uh, I could always trust in uh, Eric L. And uh, he put me on a nice little horse and he got the job done. But he's not settling for five grand. Napolitano is already eyeing up 6,000. 20 years now driving. How many more years do you see yourself doing this? And how many wins do you think you can maybe attain? Oh, I don't even look at that stuff. I just go day by day. I'm thankful for, uh, you know, the racing that we have here at uh, Harris Chester and Mohegan Sun. And I'm um, just happy with what we're doing. That's, and I just keep it simple. He's a man on a mission who will continue driving into the winner circle time and time again. For PA Harness Week, I'm Sharla McBride. Thank you, Sharla, and mucho congratulations to you, Georgie Knapp, a real good guy who just won his 5,000th race in a stellar career. Okay, talking about winning races, this is what this segment's all about. Our lovely Kelly Connors is here, and she's only got one purpose in life, well, actually two, looking good and making you your bankroll fatter. Let's watch. Thanks, Heather and Steve. A huge night of racing in Northeast today. We are going to take a look at Yonkers. Their open comes in the sixth race of the night. I like the seven River Shark. He is the class of the field, closing in on the million dollar mark for trainer Mark Ford. The post positions are assigned in tonight's open pace, but I'm not worried of him drawing outside of his rivals. Taking a look back earlier this month at Pocono, starting from outside of his rivals there, he paced the mile swiftly in 49 and 3 to take that competitive field. And I think he'll repeat in here tonight on class and speed alone. All my picks there are 7, 3, 2, and 5. Again, that's race 6 at Yonkers.
Yonkers. Next, we head to Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs for one of the most prestigious races of the year, the second annual Earl Beale Jr. Memorial Trot. I like the six Goo Goo Gaga, who was just unbelievable in last week's eliminations, trotting his way into the history books handily at 51 and 3. I spoke to the driver, Corey Callahan, following that race. He said that this horse had plenty left in the tank. He hardly really had to ask him for much and didn't even pull the plug. So he's confident heading into tonight's final, and so am I. It's going to be a good one. Six, seven, four, and nine. My picks in there. On top of the Beal final, the eliminations for the Hemp, the Lynch, and the Ben Franklin all happening at Pocono tonight. We still have plenty more racing action to get into. So after the break, we will head in the bike from Mohawk. Here comes Sweet Lou on the outside, and Sweet Lou draws up alongside Where We Needy now. Where We Needy at the inside. Sweet Lou on the outside, a head in front, a neck in front. Mohegan Sun, off-track wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. This is PA Harness Week, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let me just tell you this. There's $1.5 million on the line up north in Canada at Mohawk. The best three-year-old pacers in the world are there, including one that will go on odds on. His name is Sweet Lou. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fasten your seatbelt. It's time to go in the bike. Okay, you know the deal. Mohawk, 1.5 million on the line. The North American Cup. This is such a big deal. Sweet Lou was the prohibitive one to five chalk with Dave Pallone. One is a limp for fun and 147 and four. How good is this animal? We're about to find out. Where are we needy with Jody Jamison was the five to one second choice. And number five, thinking out loud, which of course is always dangerous to do, was eight to one with Randy Waples. And with this call, Ken Middleton. Where are we needy fronts the field. A rock and roll dance is second. Here comes Sweet Lou on the outside. And Sweet Lou draws up alongside Where are we needy now. Where are we needy at the inside? Sweet Lou on the outside, a head in front, a neck in front. He's a length in front, and he's driving clear. And Pallone has yet to move a muscle. He's just popped the plugs. Where are we needy at the inside, backing away and backing away fast. He's going to clog up the inside flow. Three quarters in 120 and three, and they come off the turn and into the stretch. Sweet Lou leads the way. Two lengths clear. Second on the outside comes Dapper Dude for Campbell now. Rushing up on the far outside comes Thinking Out Loud as Waples pushes the button. Three across finish coming up in Cup 29. Wild wide and closing is Thinking Out Loud. And Thinking Out Loud is loud and clear to win the North America Cup. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sweet Lou turned home with the lead. Didn't he expect him just to jog as he always does. Then suddenly he turned sour and in the lane he was passed by not one, not two, but three rivals and finishing fourth. Thinking out loud, got the $750,000 payday, making Randy Wables a very happy guy. Winning the cup in 147 to four. Number three, time to roll off at nine to one with Andy Miller was second. And number two, Dapper Dude off at 15 to one with John Campbell was another head back in third. And we caught up with a winning driver, Randy Wables, who was justifiably elated. It's just an unbelievable feeling, you know, it really is. All I can say first off is thank you everybody for coming to the North American Cup. We love you. We want to see you here every night. I can't say enough about you. I love you. He's been a great horse since the day that he set foot on the track. I was lucky enough to pick him up and um, I owe it all to Bob and his crew. You know, a monkey could have done the same thing, but I'm glad that uh, for tonight, my name's Bubbles. The business action of plenty. You know, we lie in the beginning of the show. Action of plenty. Don't forget, the $500,000 Earl Beale Memorial takes place. The big trot at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. Get out there tonight. We'll have it for you next week here on PA Harness Week. And for all of us here at PA Harness Week, including my partner, Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to get high on harness. It's only natural. Oh, thank God. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway. 